Now onto our dinosaur of the day, Denversaurus, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Denversaurus was a nodosaurid and kylosaur that lived in the Lake Cretaceous and what is now South Dakota in the U.S., in the Hell Creek Formation, in Wyoming, the Lance Formation, and Texas in the Aguja Formation. It had a wide snout and a wide skull, and it was covered in osteoderms and had shoulder spikes. As you'd expect for a nodosaurid right. and kylosaur. But these spikes weren't coming from its ribs. <laughs> yeah. Denversaurus was estimated to be about 20 feet or 6 meters long and weigh 3 tons. The type species is Denversaurus schlesmini. The fossils were found in 1922 by Philip Reinheimer, a collector and technician at the Colorado Museum of Natural History, which is now the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And the fossils were found in Corson County, South Dakota. Barnum Brown referred those fossils, DMNH468, to Edmontonia longiceps in 1943. Then in 1988, Bob Barker said that that fossil was a new species, Denversaurus, and another species, Edmontonia rugosidens, was Chasternbergia. The genus name Denversaurus means Denver lizard. Maybe <laughs> you could have guessed that. And it refers to the Denver Museum of Natural History. The species name is in honor of Lee Schlesman, founder of the Schlesman Family Foundation, who's a benefactor to the museum. And the holotype is part of the collection of the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. It includes a skull, no lower jaws, and some osteoderms. Skull is all you need, usually. Yeah. It's also nice to see the osteoderms. True. Bacher also referred AMNH3076 to Denversaurus. That was a skull found in Texas by Barnum Brown and Roland Bird. And that skull has been described as weathered. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, not great. Yeah. In a 1988 New York Times article, Bacher said, quote, Denversaurus was probably a little like a three-ton armadillo with spikes, end quote. Sounds like it would fit in in Texas. Big, yeah, armadillo-y. But with spikes. <laughs> he also said, quote, there seems to have been an evolutionary trend to get the eyes up off the ground and away from dust and possibly to allow for a better view of potential predators, end quote. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's one way to think of it. I never thought about the influence of dust on eye placement. Yeah, me either. I guess when we're walking around, we're not that close to the ground. <laughs> That's true. We have our <laughs> eyes about as far from the dust as possible. Yeah. In 1990, Kenneth Carpenter said Denversaurus was Edmontonia sp. Meaning unclear species. Yeah. And he said that Bacher's reason for naming Denversaurus, which were the eye sockets were more to the rear of the skull rather than the middle, to get it away from the dust, presumably, was based on Bacher's reconstruction of the skeleton, but that skeleton was partially crushed. Carpenter said that this fossil that was some kind of species of Edmontonia had affinities to Edmontonia rugosidens. In 2000, Ford found Denversaurus to be valid, though, after looking at osteoderms in ankylosaur systematics. In 2015, Michael Burns wrote his thesis on intraspecific variation in ankylosaurs and found Denver source to be likely valid based on phylogeny. He also mentioned another specimen, BHI 6225, an endocast. Burns described the highest point of the skull roof of Denver source as being between the orbits, where the eyes are, and agreed with Bacher that the holotype did have orbits or its eyes more toward the rear of the skull but said there was too much variability in individual Denversaurus that this character was not, quote, taxonomically useful. So I mean, he agreed then that its eyes were more towards the back. Maybe that did help this particular individual with the dust. But based on the specimens that we have, uh, maybe this wasn't consistent or, it's, you know, it's just not consistent enough to say this trait makes it Denversaurus. Interesting. Burns did say in his thesis that Denversaurus, Edmontonia, and Panoplosaurus were all in the same clade, Panoplosaurinae. And he also said that Edmontonia was more basal than Denversaurus. The team from the Black Hills Institute found a Denversaurus skeleton in Wyoming, and they nicknamed that one Tank. That's right. <laughs> BHI 127327. And Tank includes the lower jaws parts of the torso, and over 100 osteoderms. Wow. Yeah. 
You can, if you really wanted to, order a cast of Tank from them. <laughs> I think Tank is a pretty good nickname for almost any ankylosaur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but one where you have a ton of osteoderms is a good choice. So you can see Denversaurus at Woodland Park's Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center in Colorado in the U.S. Uh, other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place as Denversaurus included T-Rex, Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, Struthiomimus, and Pachycephalosaurus. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.